Here now is Faith to Live By with Pastor Barber. In Psalm 23 and verse 3 we read, He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Here is Rick Bowering and Tim Sturby to sing, Restore My Soul. The Bible has the answer. You have provided the questions. We search the scriptures, God's holy word, in order to find the answers. Question number one. If all the evangelical churches in your area use rotten music, is this reason to give up and stay home? I cannot tell you how I have wrestled with this question and delayed in giving a response to it as I've pondered again and again, what is the answer? And it is not simply one person who is asking this. Now, a little bit of background. I know that many people who I have met with over the years, they have said to me these words. There was a day, there was a Sunday, when I was driving home from church, going home from church, and I decided 
I was going home mad for the last time. And they discontinued attending church. They started to watch television and listen to radio and get their blessing in various other means. And that is a tragic thing. I also know that some people become physically ill by the sensory overload which comes through very loud music in churches today, through uh, smoke-making machines, through light shows, and it is not what church is supposed to be. But let us come to the scriptures and hear what the scriptures have to say about this. It, it says precious little about music it speaks of how that we are as believers to gather together. Stay with me as we work along here. Hebrews chapter 10 and verses 23 to 25, first of all, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised is faithful. And let us, let us believers that is, let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds not forsaking our own assembling together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more, as you see the day drawing near, the day of Jesus Christ and of his return. We also have in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and I will leave you to read that entire chapter, and also Ephesians chapter 4, and verses 1 to 16, Paul gives rich, rich teaching about the body of Christ and how that we are members of that body and that we are linked together. Now, some churches, they have unchurched themselves. And they, although they might bear the name church, although many have jettisoned that, they don't want to be known as a church. They want to be known as something else. I don't know what, what would be a higher honor than to be known as the church of the living God, but they have jettisoned that as an old moniker and they don't want it. But many have unchurched themselves and they have given up their privileged place because they are not caring for the sheep. They are not looking to others. Let me simply say that believer, you cannot stand on your own. You need help. You need to be an encouragement to others and you need to be encouraged by others. So you need to tie in, whether it's with one or two people, whether it's in a church building or whether it's in your home, you need Christian fellowship in the most desperate way. And let me plainly say, TV and radio and computer ministries aren't going to cut it. Now, I'm happy to serve with faith to live by and give leadership, but you need more. We're glad to be a blessing. We're glad to be a strength, but you need more. Pray, ask the Lord that he would open the door, but gather together with others, whether it's even on the phone, whether it's by that means, and fellowship together, read the scriptures together, sing together, and worship the Lord, give attention to his word, and grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to whom be all the glory and all the praise. Question number two, are Christmas and Easter truly Christian celebrations or do they have pagan origins? Good question. And this has been asked numerous times because various individuals have heard something from somewhere that, well, Christmas, it's a pagan, a pagan festival, that the, that the early believers, they made a mistake and that they were uh, got offline and that Easter in the same way that they were picking up from other religions. Let me say that we are in the world, but we are not of the world. You cannot find a single day on the calendar that does not have a connection to some religion somewhere. 
and the very months and the very days of the week, they bear in their names the deities that are foreign to the Bible. And so if we are to jettison and to throw out everything that smacks of other religions and, and of worship to other deities, we would have to cease living in this world and we would have to make up a whole new language. And well, so there's a duplicity of those who argue that Christmas and Easter are actually of pagan origin. Go with me to Jesus' own words as he is praying in John chapter 17 and verses 14, 15, and 16. Jesus says, I have given them your word and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Jesus prays this. He is in the world. The disciples are in the world and would be in the world for some years yet. But Jesus says they're here, but they're in another sense, not here. Verse 15, I do not ask you to take them out of the world because they had a work that God wanted them to do in this world. I do not ask you to take them out of the world, but to keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Believers are in the strange situation that we have an earthly address and yet our citizenship is in heaven, no mistake about it, make no mistake about it. And though we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, as I think is perfectly right and proper, you can celebrate it in, in April or in September if you like, but I think it's good to celebrate the coming of our glorious Lord and Savior who took on flesh for us and then most especially at Easter time, which is unmistakably tied in with the same timing of the Jewish Passover, that we celebrate these things of the great things that God has done for us. Thank you for these questions. If you have a question, send it to us and we will use it as quickly as we are able. Our mailing address, Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. Heidi Taves and Dorothy Kennedy now come to sing Till the Storm Passes Over, and that's followed by my daughter, Ruth, teaming up with Matt Bowring to sing Hiding in Thee. <laughs> Oh! 
I'm so pleased to announce to you this new CD we have just released of 13 songs, solos, and duets under the title, Till the Storm Passes By. All of the music on today's program is being taken from this CD, and I know that you will enjoy having a copy in your home. Let me read to you a few of the titles which are included among the 13. Tim Sturby sings, Jesus is all the world to me. Heidi sings, Tis the blessed hour of prayer. Rick and Matt team up to sing, Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. Heidi and Dorothy sing, Where he leads, I'll follow. These and many more for you to be blessed and for you to be strengthened in your faith and in your walk with Christ. Ask for your copy of Till the Storm Passes By when you write to Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. Or call us toll-free 1-833-367-3852. Or use our website, faithtoliveby.ca, in order to contact us. Tim Sturby now comes to sing, Sitting at the Feet of Jesus. Jesus, oh, what 
what words I hear him say. Have you ever considered how frequently in the scriptures, both Old Testament and New, that the people of God find themselves in a straight situation? They are crammed in. They are in a situation where it seems there is no escape. Think of the children of Israel down in their Egyptian bondage, and they had no way of getting out. Think of the Apostle John on the Isle of Patmos. Think of the three Hebrews in Daniel who were thrown into the fiery furnace. But there, there was a fourth man that Nebuchadnezzar saw walking in the midst of the flame, God with his people in trouble. In Psalm 23 and verse 4, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. God with his people there. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Even with my enemies looking on, you prepare a rich banqueting table. You have anointed my head with oil, my cup overflows. Repeatedly, the apostle Paul found himself in a difficult situation. He faced opposition repeatedly in his missionary journeys. And as he made his way to Rome at the end of the book of Acts, we find that once again in the storm that raged upon the Mediterranean Sea, that there was no place to turn. There was no rescue helicopter. There was no larger vessel that could come along and say, pile onto our deck and you will be safe. Their trust needed to be in the God of heaven, who even in the midst of that vicious storm was there with them. Acts chapter 27, and I especially focus in on verses 22 to 25. Paul had said to them, look, we should stay here. We should stay in this harbor. But 
others thought otherwise, and they, their voices carried the day, and so they made their way slowly along the shore, but very quickly a wind blew them out into the midst of the Mediterranean, and they were at the mercy of the wind and the waves. Paul said, you should have listened to my voice, but now hear what God has to say about the situation. I urge you, he says, first of all, to keep up your courage. That's good for us, to keep up our courage in the midst of the storm and the tempest that rages round about us. I urge you to keep up your courage, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. Paul was a realist. He spoke exactly of what would take place, not of what he hoped would take place. He says, for this very night, an angel of the God to whom I belong. Paul said, I urge you to keep up your courage. And the reason is that I belong to a God who watches over me. There were lots of other gods around the Mediterranean. But Paul said, this one is radically different, completely different. He cares for his own. The God to whom I belong and whom I serve gladly, the God whom I gladly serve, his angel stood before me and said, Paul, you must stand before Caesar, and what God wills will happen. It's not a, well, there's a good chance. It's 50-50 at least, maybe 60-40 or even 70-30. What God says will take place most certainly will take place. And God has granted to you all those who are sailing with you. And Paul says, keep up your courage. He repeats it again. And he says, I believe God. I believe God that it will turn out exactly as he has said. Jesus, when he lifted up, the angel said, Jesus will so come once again. He is coming again. It will happen exactly as was told us. Will you be ready? Will you be looking for his coming? Oh, look to him today and be ready. Turn to him in repentance and in faith and know life in his name even as you do. Yes, there's room at the cross for you. Thank you for joining Pastor Barbara today. Please watch for Faith to Live By again next Sunday at this same time on this same station. Until then, Faith to Live By prays that the peace of God will fill your heart and that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Pastor Barbara would love to hear from you. The mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. 